this is more of a video for our podcast, W2 versus 1099. This was a little longer than our usual 10 to 11 minutes, but we just thought it was worth a little bit extra information for understanding as a business owner, your responsibility, if you are hiring people, how you are hiring people and how they are paid. And it's a very narrow line of you hedging bets on being incorrectly designating people who you are paying for your business. Today on Simple Sense for Small Business, we're going to be doing a deep dive into W-2 employees versus 1099 contractors. And we're going to discuss the vital differences in every aspect of what we've seen business owners fail to understand about this concept. Most small business owners are confused on the designation of people who work for them. The reason we've seen this firsthand is because of the disaster loans that were made available due to the COVID-19 and the CARES Act legislation. Part of this is strictly a podcast audio only, but if you're listening to this on Anchor or Spotify or Apple where our podcast is available, you will miss out on the on-camera experience where we were live discussing this with our EIDL loan audience. You'll be able to download a PDF that outlines some of the fundamentals to distinguish between W-2 employee and 1099 contractor. So hang out with us. What's an independent contractor? Do you know, Linda? I do know. An independent contractor is a self-employed person who receives a 1099 as proof of compensation. And the person can work for multiple business entities, and uh, they basically can make up their own rules on how they want to do the work. In fact, the IRS says... For defining an independent contractor, the general rule is that an individual is an independent contractor if the payer has the right to control or direct only the result of the work and not what will be done and how it will be done. In other words, I hire a guy to paint my house and I say, paint the outside of the house. Here's the color I want. The result should be the house is painted. I cannot tell them how to do the work or any other feature of doing the work. All I can direct them on and pay them for is the result. This is very, very important because so many small business owners treat their independent contractors as employees. If I were to venture a guess without having factual evidence of the millions of business owners that are confusing this designation is the cost of having an employee on staff and what shortcuts a business owner is thinking that they're making to save money or budgeting or whatever to have a 1099, pay them as a 1099, but they're truly an employee because they are working for that employer only and are dictated on how they're supervised. And what to do. This alleged cost cutting is going to get you all in a lot of trouble because the IRS has been saying for quite a number of years now, they're going to be scrutinizing these relationships. And when they do, people are going to pay a price, a hefty price in fines, penalties, and other types of things. And that's not even talking about state regulations like in New York, workman's comp. Linda, you know all about that. I do. And I'm sure there are other states that mandate workers comp for true W-2 employees. Speaking to your fines and the scrutiny for enforcement, there are just so many different nuances of why these government agencies, i.e. the IRS and the Department of Labor, are finding out that employers are trying to take shortcuts and save some money by not paying the dues of having these employees. So some of those are Social Security, the FICA, what else? Well, one of the biggest issues is federal income taxes. You know, when you receive a W-2, and you get your paycheck every week, your employer is withholding a portion of your paycheck and every three months is sending a payment to the IRS uh, to pay in advance what will be your tax bill when you do your tax return next year. But what we find with many independent contractors is because they're the ones who are responsible for making these quarterly payments, they don't make these payments. And therefore, there's a, a, a lack of funding into the IRS as crazy as that sounds, but it's true. You may only pay that tax once a year. You're really supposed to pay it quarterly. 
Those are federal regulations. That's a big difference between a W-2 and a 1099. In the W-2 case, the employer does that. In the 1099, the independent contractor is supposed to do it, but very often they don't. Well, I'd like to speak to something that may or may not be akin to this concept of the 1099 versus W-2, and that's for business owners who have to pay sales tax. Now, I know you're shaking your head like, what? Like you now can't I'm see confused. It. And now you are confused. Okay, so, you know, there are certain, like when our consulting agency got an LLC, we have to declare to the state when we incorporate the type of services that we're providing because we may be subject to having to collect sales tax depending oh, on right. what goods and services. Now, there, this has nothing to do with employees, but what I'm saying is there are business owners that truly are subject to having to collect sales tax for their- Which means that an independent contract to might be responsible for and that they as have well. to yes and they have to incorporate that into their invoice so what I'm saying is just like a 1099 contractor who has to then mindfully arrange for what they owe to various entities of the yeah, taxes federal, state local, right and sales taxes and so forth. you know yeah. I it's not saving anybody any time or money because someone's still responsible well it's putting the burden on the independent contractor is a good way to segue into the Wikipedia definition of an independent contractor because we're talking about goods and services. This is what Wikipedia says. An independent contractor is a person, business, or corporation that provides goods or services under a written contract or a verbal agreement. Unlike employees, independent contractors do not work regularly for an employer, but work as required when they may be subject to the law of agency, the agency being that agreement you have with that quote unquote employer. And there you have it with goods and services, which you yeah, I never even thought of that, Linda. Look at the big brain on Linda <laughs> that sales taxes may be due in certain municipalities and certain states on the goods or services that you provide. And you can be sure that many, many, many independent contractors who receive a 1099 are not making these payments. My personal opinion is this 1099 thing is something that I've watched for the last two decades or so get completely out of hand as employers sought to to shift responsibility for these types of payments to the governments for taxes and so forth onto the workers, but they still treat the workers like they're employees. Right. Well, that's one of the reasons why part of this podcast slash podcast style video includes on camera where we talk live about how business owners were either not privy to the EIDL loan because they were paid as W-2 as an opposite example, or how uh, employers were paying 1099 thinking those were employees oh, and we claiming all funds. all the time, especially when I did the Paycheck Protection Program loans for our clients. I would say, how many employees do you have? And people would say three. And I would ask, these are W-2 or 1099? And nine times, times out of 10, people come back and say, oh, they're 1099. I'm like, they're not employees. Right, because there would and be a pay- business owners did not get this at all. They thought, wait, they're not? That's why I've said, and why we started this channel, where I said, if COVID it wasn't the time to figure out how some things you thought you knew that you didn't know and that you were grossly inaccurate in your assumptions of how things work in the world. This is the time. So here's the definition from the IRS of a W-2 employee. A W-2 employee is the traditional hourly or salaried employee. The employer withholds Social Security, Medicare, federal, state, and local taxes and pays employer payroll taxes. The employer may be required under certain state laws to withhold or provide through direct payment or other fees such as workman's comp insurance and unemployment insurance. The employer directs the employee how the work will be done, what will be done, and the result of the work. If you have one person working for you and you're the only person that pays them, you are telling them how to do the work, you're supposed to give them a W-2. What is a statutory employee? So a statutory employee is an interesting designation which falls in between 1099 and W-2. The IRS says, if workers are independent contractors under common law rules, such workers may nevertheless be treated as employees by statute or what's called a statutory employee. 
for certain employment tax purposes if they fall within any one of the following four categories and meet three conditions under Social Security and Medicare taxes. So we've given you in our PDF download what those four categories are and what the three Social Security and Medicare tax requirements are. So please download our PDF. There is a very narrow definition of people who are paid statutory. And why did we bring statutory into this? Because of two people we spoke to who thought they were independent contractors, but they received W-2 compensation. So that's why I did the extra legwork of researching what a statutory employee was. How could you be independent? but also get a W-2. Download the PDF and you can find out. Our wealth and healthness section for today's podcast. And it's very simple. Are you terrified of the United States government coming after your business and charging you fines and penalties and late payments and late interest? You should be. Because the Internal Revenue Service, the IRS, and the United States Department of Labor are actively looking to go after employers who are miscategorizing their employees. Thanks for the inspiration, Ashton. But let me answer the question since we're on the show. A 1099 person who does work for your business is independent of your business in every way except remuneration. Remuneration means when you pay that person. And the way you pay that person is the gross amount of money that you're paying them. So if you are offering to pay an independent contractor $1,000, five days of work, that's the remuneration. If you're offering to pay them $20 an hour for an agreed upon you should have it in writing, an agreed upon number of hours, that's the remuneration. You cannot and are not permitted to do any of the following. Tell them when they should show up at work. Tell them how long they should work. Tell them what days they should work. Tell them they have to wear uniforms. Tell them they have to follow other than basic rules about customer facing type of things. You can't give them any employment rules at all. Not any. You are literally not the boss of them. Like my friend Eddie Brown says, you ain't the boss of me. That's what a 1099 independent contractor is. You ain't the boss of me. I like to, to say, describe it in one of two ways. Either a musician who's playing at a party at your house. What are you looking for? My little paper towels. Oh, I use that to clean the fly. Oh, damn it. I had to blow my nose. It's um, going to get messy around here again. So here's the musician. Going to have a birthday party. I hire a musician to show up and play music. Literally, I can't tell the musician anything except could, w- is it possible for you to play this song and that song? But I, I can't tell them other than what time the party starts. I mean, they don't, they don't work for me. So I can't give them very specific rules rules. Same thing with the house painter. House painter says, okay, I'll show up at your house on Saturday to to paint, you know, the outside of the house. Mm-hmm. And then Friday afternoon, the house painter says, I'm sorry, I won't be there tomorrow. I'll be here next Tuesday. You, you got nothing. Can't say anything. That's the relationship between you and your business and a 1099 independent contractor. Here's the problem. Drum roll. For a variety of socioeconomic reasons, this 1099 crap has become the norm in how businesses and people who are working for businesses are getting paid. Mm -hmm. And it's a problem, folks, because it is a violation Mm -hmm. of IRS and Department Department of of Labor. Labor. You're not just violating one federal government agency rule. You're violating two federal government agency rules. Yeah. I, and, and by the way, I'm going to interrupt and throw in that I used to own an insurance agency. I'm still a licensed insurance broker. And I would hear of these uh, scenarios where someone's full time working somewhere, getting paid 1099. And I'm like, what? And they're like going to the office, working full time and getting paid 1099. The problem with that too is workers comp because if that if they were a W two employee, you as a business owner are mandated to well in the state of New York and other states you must get workers comp for full time employees. Well, this is how this whole nonsense about ten ninety nine came about because both employ primarily employers but also workers embrace this idea of a ten ninety nine so that both sides of it could avoid all kinds of financial issues. The employer doesn't have to withhold payroll taxes, doesn't have to do things like follow statutory requirements for workmen compensation contributions, other types of benefits. Yeah. And the folks who were getting, by the way, abused, in my opinion, yes. this way, because if you were somebody who was working under someone else's business and they treated you like an employee, but paid you like a 1099, yes. it's all well and good. You think, oh, great. I got a thousand dollars this week instead of 625 after taxes. Yes, You still got to pay the taxes. So I don't know what you folks who are 1099s think you were achieving because all you were really doing is screwing yourself out of social security benefits yeah. and all kinds of other benefits. And it was all great for your employer. Oh, and by the way, again, once again, I don't know how many times I'm a broken record, but uh, this happened to somebody on Twitter. She 
was reaching out to me that she had a contract with somebody and she was being paid. This was the opposite. They were paying her W-2, but she was an independent contractor who was supposed to get a 1099. Well, so but now she didn't qualify. She got declined new, the EIDL. There's a new concept called statutory W-2, which I haven't looked into, which might actually have... Um, covered me. So when I was a mortgage loan officer, for all intents and purposes, I was independent. I mean, I worked on 100% commission. I should have been paid on a 1099, but I was paid by W-2. The reason being because the banks I worked for were licensed by the federal government to do federal government loans. The federal government required me to be paid on a W-2. Now, I don't know if that falls under the category of statutory W-2 or not, but, but this, this is 1099 stuff, the rules are you cannot tell the independent contractor how to do their is job. Is Gigi still with us? Because this is really important. And it goes to the Office of Inspector General's report yes. that came out last week where the OIG or the SBA said $4.5 billion of fraudulent grants were given out to small businesses that don't have employees. Here's where you are wrong, Mr. Inspector General. And if you could come out here into the real world for a few minutes and live in our shoes for a half an hour you would see how small business is really conducted, SBA. And what we see time and time again is we have a small business owner who tells me they've got three employees. And then when I get their tax return, I have no payroll. And I got this a lot when I was doing the PPP. That was the nightmare of it. I would say, okay, show me your 940 and your 941s. Oh, I don't have any of those. No, I pay everybody 1099. If they're 1099, they're not employees. An employee, right. if you're classifying someone as an employee, they must receive a W-2. Yeah. So I'm going to put that to bed right now. But that's why when people filled out the EIDL application in, in 2020 and they got their grant, which the BS people, morons running the SBA back last year, changed it from $10,000 to $1,000 per employee. Many small business owners like you all out there who think you have employees when you really got an independent contract, you're writing down in your EIDL application, you had 10 people, you got three people. Which you do. They're working for you. And you think they're employees, but they're not classified legally, financially, tax-wise, Department of Labor-wise, as employees. Okay? So, please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. That really is a huge support, more than you know. Thank you all for tuning in. Bye.